So I'm starting off painting wet into wet using some of the yellows, um, some cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, and using my size 10 brush. And I've wet the entire surface. Everything is wet, the bauble included and the leaves, etc. I have actually pre-prepared my watercolour paper. I'm using cold press 300 grams watercolour paper. It's about nine by 12 inches. I've used some masking fluid to sort of mask out the light areas. It protects the white and light of the paper, so it allows you to paint really freely. If you haven't used masking fluid before, I'll put a link in the description below all about masking fluid. It's a video I made a little while ago, and you may find that helpful. So as you can see here, I'm using my size 10 brush, painting in some of the reds, the cooler reds, some pinks. I've also mixed up some violet and brown, sort of burnt sienna to create some darks. Here I'm painting some yellow, yellow here on the top of the bauble on the ring just to create sort of a golden color but obviously if you have gold watercolor paint which I know you can get hold of you could also use that so this is some violet and brown and I'm actually painting some of the light green colors there as well wet into wet don't be afraid of letting all the colors run because I'm going to be lifting out the bokeh effect as well and painting wet on dry so you can be quite loose here painting these sort of really warm Christmassy colours. I painted some creamy red damp into damp there and I'm sprinkling some table salt onto the damp surface there so it will sort of absorb the paint and once the paint dries naturally it will create this most amazing wintry effect. And what I'm doing now is I'm applying some more masking fluid with a small round brush. To protect the brush from the masking fluid, I've actually dipped it into hand liquid soap and that creates a barrier between the brush and the masking fluid. And once you've finished with the masking fluid, rinse it under the tap and your brush will be as good as new. If you have any brushes that have been spoilt by masking fluid, and that has happened to me and many of my students, I will put a link in the description below all about how I actually rescued the brush. So I hope you find that helpful, those of you that might need to watch that. So um, I'm just sort of painting on, sort of wet on dry with the masking fluid, some of the highlights on the bauble there and I will allow the masking fluid to dry naturally. If you blow dry masking fluid, it's quite tricky to remove, so allow it to dry naturally. So I'm using this fun bokeh technique, and it's using a stencil and a stencil brush. It's a circle stencil, and I'm just working the paint off with the stencil brush to lift off the paint and then press off with a paper towel any excess liquid, any excess paint. Really sort of get rid of that, because otherwise that can bleed back into your painting. Vary the size of the circles as well, so it creates a really nice, interesting look. Um, you don't need a stencil for this. You could just use the stencil um, brush on its own. I know some of my students have used a Q-tip as well, or a sponge, or just an old brush. Whatever you do, don't use your best watercolour brushes for this, because it can ruin the points. And I'm just going to work my way around now, varying the sizes and lifting off. And for those of you that quite like this technique, I will put a link in the description below of another video I made all about this really fun technique.
So once you've finished lifting off, allow your painting to dry naturally. I'm allowing the masking fluid on the bauble to dry naturally. So once your painting is dry, I'm working now wet on dry to begin with some of the reds and then adding some violet to the reds as well, um, damp into damp, just creating some of the darker tonal values in this bauble here. It's very shiny and obviously I've masked out the lighter areas. I'm painting in a very sort of dark colour now using some violet and a little bit of burnt sienna, painting on top of the wet red paint as well if it bleeds too much just wait for the red to dry off a little bit still having the shine on the surface and have your sort of darker paint slightly creamier so it doesn't travel too much I'm using a small round size 2 brush here and I've got a mixture of some yellow with a touch of burnt sienna painting this sort of golden um, part of the bauble here working wet on dry painting just a few marks on top of the previously yellow dried paint paint. quite nice adding a little bit of orange to that as well and what I'm doing now is I've used a little bit of the burnt sienna again with the yellow painting the branch of the Christmas tree here wet on dry and I'm using a sort of light green here yellow mixed with some of the phthalo green light and just painting wet on dry you could use cerulean blue with yellow here as well any yellow will do and I'm using my size four brush. You could use something a little bit larger as well, but it's just to paint some of the leaves in here now, the light tonal values first. As you can see, I've masked out some of the top part of the leaves there where I'm painting just now. I'll remove that later. Um, it's just to create a bit of light at the top to reserve the light, especially when I was painting in that first stage, wet in wet. So I'm just applying some of the lighter green here now and just dropping in slightly darker green here, added a little bit of blue to this mix here. You could use Prussian blue, ultramarine even, or even a little bit of Payne's grey. I'm working damp into damp just to create these darks. And I'm just painting a few sort of marks to the left hand side here as well, quite loose. And what I'll do now is I'll allow my painting to dry. Once my painting is dry, I'm removing the masking fluid with some paper towel. Do make sure your painting is dry because it can smudge or even tear your watercolour paper. I'm now working with my small round size 4 brush, some of the dark sort of tonal values um, on the top of the bauble here, the gold part. And it's a mixture of the burnt sienna with a tiny touch of ultramarine just to create some darks and details. I'm also painting with my size 10 brush some of the reds on the bauble, really trying to get all of those interesting tonal values on the bauble. It's very shiny. I'm glazing over some of the parts where I use masking fluid as well. So some of those lights aren't as bright as some areas. So it creates a little bit of subtlety. What I'm doing now is using my stencil brush and just softening some of these lights lights here at the top of the leaves and using my paper towel to remove any excess paint. And I'm just going to work in now a little bit of green here using my size 6 brush working sort of damp into damp really just to paint a little bit of soft green just at the top there. I'm also softening some of the hard edges here where I previously applied masking fluid. And what I've decided to do is use some more of that bokeh technique just to create a little bit more atmosphere and that Christmassy look in my painting in the background using my stencil and stencil brush. Thank you. 
as you saw there I've actually painted some more darks and details on the bauble as well the gold part using my size 4 brush with a mixture of burnt sienna and a touch of Payne's grey I thought it would be quite nice to experiment to paint some of these bouquet circles um, so I'm actually using the stencil as you can see here and I'm going to apply some yellow paint to give some of these maybe baubles in the background some colour and what I'm doing here is I'm not using the stencil I'm just filling in the circle with my size 6 brush working wet on dry just a quite a pale yellow I'm just lifting up with my paper towel just to create some lighter areas and I'm doing the same in the bottom left hand corner here this time using a very dilute red mm. so once your painting is dry what I'm going to use now is Winsor & Newton's white gouache if you don't have any of this you can see I'm running out of it um, you could use white watercolour paint, white acrylic ink or white acrylic paint. I'm using my size 10 brush. I've slightly watered down as you can see the white gouache and I'm holding the brush very firmly in my painting hand and tapping with my non-painting hand in the middle of the brush. So try to stay away from the top of the brush and allow it to flick and spatter. Now it does get a bit messy so make sure you mask your painting area surrounding. You don't want to get it on anything precious but it does look very Christmassy. You don't have to do this though. You could leave it without the spattering but I, I love spattering at the end of my painting. It stops me from overworking. So I'm removing the washi tape. It reveals a lovely white border and it gives me time to assess to see if I need to do any more to my painting. But I think I'll leave it there for now. I'm just showing you how I remove it from the watercolour block. You can see there's a little gap there and I just remove it and there is the painting finished. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions about it please put them in the comment section below. For those of you that would like to learn more about watercolour painting why not think about joining my Patreon membership. The videos are longer, more in-depth, they are ad-free and you will get access to downloadable outline sketches and you can cancel any time. Details about that can be found in the top right hand corner of your screen or in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.